Good afternoon, everybody. Mitzi Dela Cruz here, host of Lincoln Live. I hope you all had a safe and happy Halloween. And today we have a special treat for you guys. We do have Mr. Ray Gonzalez here, and a lot of you already know Ray, but for those of you that don't, it's a really special treat getting to know him and hear from him today. And we will hear from Astro Air Design and Solar um, on a future show, and we'll talk more about that later. We'll post the schedule of, of we've made a couple of adjustments coming up. But in any case, we wanted to go ahead and talk to Ray today because he's actually got um, a showcase coming up this weekend, right? I do. But yeah, so we'll get into that in a little bit, but I think, you know, one of the coolest things, you guys got to hear his story, because if you don't know his story, you've got to hear it. So, Ray, <laughs> thank you <laughs> so much for joining us. Thank you for coming here. I, I'm, I'm humbled you showed up, and, and you're here. <laughs> Thanks. I'm excited to be here. And like I said, I, so I had the pleasure of hearing from Ray when I took Leadership Lincoln last year. And so um, I just think he's got such a cool story and I can't wait for you guys to hear it. So can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background? I will. Um, I grew up right here in Lincoln. I'm at 208 D Street now where my studio is. And just on the other side of this wall is the house I finished growing up in. And it's the house I came to when I was born from Auburn and just grew up here and then went to college and came back and taught for 36 years here in town and um, a as a child should I yeah please. A as a child growing up I always knew I was going to make art and always knew I was going to make things and being young I didn't have a sense that everyone else didn't know either I okay. kind of assumed they did because I did and it <laughs> didn't seem special or unusual it just was and right. You know, I lived here, I'm, I had curly, crazy hair and big ears, and I was going to make art. That's I, who I was. And so I remember being a little guy, and in my mom's house, my mom was wonderful, Sally Garcia. She was mm. the sweetest person, and, um, but she still didn't like me drawing on the walls. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I had to learn to stop, and so I couldn't draw on the walls. Finally, I got the message, and then I learned um, with an eraser those big erasers you mm -hmm. get in school if you rub your drawing or your eraser on the wall you can erase paint and so <laughs> I thought I'm a genius I'm not drawing anymore I'm erasing and I was drawing was the rule so I would erase drawings erase paint on the walls to make images and, and then that was worse because she was thinking oh now you're just being a wise guy <laughs> I, I really wasn't I thought I solved it and, and it wasn't it didn't work it was worse and so I had to go outside and figure out what to do. And right here on the same ground I'm at, uh -huh. um, I'm like drawing in the ground with sticks. And I didn't know then, but that was clay too. Yeah. And so I'm drawing in the clay and it's some places it, the drawings would stay and some it kind of crumbled. So I learned where to go and then could make things that stayed together. And I didn't, again, I didn't know it was clay and I never fired it. I didn't know about ceramics, mm -hmm. but I could start building things out of the ground. And so I did and just kind of kept doing that. And um, as I grew up going through school, you know, would draw as much as I could and getting old. And there were no galleries in Lincoln. There were I didn't know any artists. Right. I don't know how that happened. It just did. And finally, getting into Glen Edwards Middle School as a student, being excited to have an actual art class. Right. And then taking art there and getting into high school. And Arlen Welch, who was a genius teacher, just a, the best teacher I've ever had in my life, he showed me some techniques and gave me a spot to work. And so I did and just kept working and working. And then to Sierra College and learning more about ceramics and seeing the bags of Lincoln clay at Sierra College and understanding, oh my gosh, that's from Lincoln, that's from my town. Right. I didn't really know. Yeah. And uh, then um, going on to different colleges and taking workshops around the country and um, working in clay, working in clay, working in clay, and then coming back, it, it felt necessary to come back to teach here. Yes. It's like, here's where I'm from and yeah. it's time to come home. and. and uh, teach and you know, kind of pass it on and, and keep working so yeah that that's kind of how that happened I love that and it all really came full circle yeah, I've had I I'm blessed I feel lucky yeah you know it, not that it's been easy always but it's I've always known and and it's been you know it's just work getting there sometimes but you keep working 
Well, and one, that's one of the coolest things. I think, you know, when we're, when we're children, mm -hmm. um, we don't really have a concept of, well, you know, this is what I want to do, but is it going to be profitable? Or right. is it going to be, um, you know, there's only so many different, you know, a certain percentage of people that actually have success in creating, right. you know, a, a livelihood right. in this. And we don't have those restrictions and those reservations. And if, you know, that's where we project, that's what we're going to do, right. then we can make it happen. Right. And it's not until we get older, you know, then we have society telling us, well, you know, this is, this is your ceiling here and this is your ceiling here. And, you know, I just, I think it's so cool that you said, you know what? No, this is my path. I'm going to make this path. And you made it happen. Right. Right. It, it was just long, hard work. But, uh, but I think growing up, I'm from a big family, family of nine. Wow. You learn to make do with what you have, yeah. and then you find your way. Like, that's your own job, not someone else's. Mm -mm. Like, you get there. If you want it, um, get there. That's right. And so so I did. And it didn't seem, it just seemed normal. <laughs> you know, not easy, but normal. It's like, okay, I have to do this. Yeah. And I have to stay with it, and I have to work hard, and I have to be serious. And every part of that step, that journey counts. Right. And, and so I did. And it just, you know, it's so it's what I did. And it all builds your story. And then for you to have the ability to come impact children and youth in our community and then help them to figure out what their story is and be a part of that, oh. that's cool. Oh, thanks, thanks. So how did you come to be an art teacher for GEMS and 12 Bridges? And I, I was, um, here's, here's the story, real story. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm making art in college and selling art. Sure. And then um, sometimes I'd sell a lot of art and thinking, I could just make art and do this. Yeah. You know, and just make art. And and then I want health care. <laughs> and then I want food every month. <laughs> right. <laughs> like every month, not just when stuff show, sells. <laughs> and, and I'm making my way through college. Um, I worked at recreation programs. I, I taught it as I was an art director for summer camps for people with disabilities. Really? And um, I didn't realize I was building um, sort of a background in that already. Right. I was looking for summer jobs to get me through school. Yeah. And so um, it seemed natural. So I got into an art credentialing program mm -hmm. and worked hard. And a um, student taught in Sacramento, different parts of Sacramento, a year and a half. Um, all kinds of different schools, high school, middle school, elementary, and then uh, realized after teaching there that it felt better to come home to, to actually teach. Right. Because this was sort of my family, my tribe. Right. And um, made sense to come back because I, you know, I, when, I'm, when I was teaching, when I first started teaching, and might have been tough on some kids who I knew their family growing up right. or I grew up with them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, is your dad still working here for Micah? So you might want to behave because I'm coming over for dinner, if not. And, <laughs> and, and all good kids. Yeah. But it's like uh, knowing, knowing kids' stories and families in town. Yeah. And they were supportive. Yeah. And I would, you know, you look out for, you look out for kids. That's right. And it was, um, you know, I was lucky. And so I... When I, w my wife Colleen and I, we had kids. You know, we wanted them here to be surrounded. That's right. By that um, family, by yeah. that, and by friends that look out for you, and them too. So mm -hmm. that's how. So I, I'm just a little bit envious. I'll be honest. Oh. When I find people um, like yourself that's grown up here, that's generationally mm -hmm. Lincolnites. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, in Folsom, Sacramento, kind of a variety of places, and kind of moved around a lot, but. Um, my kids are all from here, and so I just I think that's so cool that you know that you had the experience because, in many ways, Lincoln has changed a lot. It's grown a yeah, lot, and yeah. you can attest to that. Yeah. But in in other many ways, um, we're we're still trying to keep a lot of the heritage, you know, similar right. to what it was, right? Right. The Even community. If, yeah. yeah. Looking out for each other. Yeah. As we expand, so it's, right. That's that's cool. That's yeah. Really I feel cool. lucky, and, and I yeah. yeah, it's it's been a. a there's been a lot of growth and a lot of good people moving in. Yes. And um, a lot of adjustments, really. Because, you know, it gets busier and faster and there's no time. And But um, even teaching all that time, you still see kids come through. They're still kids. Yeah. You know, and they still are looking for a way to um, sort of find themselves. Middle school yeah. is where I taught for most of the years. Glenn Edwards and 12 Bridges Middle School. Yeah. And um, all good kids. And to be able to teach them some techniques to carry with them, like mm -hmm. they don't go away. That technique helps. Right. And what I was trying to teach the whole time I was teaching really wasn't 
wasn't just here's how you do a drawing. Um, here's how when you want to learn something. Here are the techniques. Here's the steps. And it's going to be hard. Yeah. And you might fall down. And you might make some horrible drawings that you don't like or things don't work out. But you get another piece of paper. Right. And then you start again. And then you make, the, make it better than the last one. And, and it's work. You just stay with it and, and learn to solve wherever you want to go. Part of the talk was um, I would ask students what they want to do yeah. <laughs> with their life. And, and they didn't know. Most of them would know. Some are tentative. And they didn't have to tell me. Yeah. But it's that... Um, y reminding them you get to choose like you get to choose not me right. you know, I'm a great guy and I want everyone to be an artist but not everyone wants to be and that's okay right. and so uh, you choose and you can hold that here or you can share it yeah. but um, start building you don't have to be an expert at it yet no when I, when I was a little goofy kid drawing I don't think my drawings were very good really and I don't know why I kept drawing I just did yeah and, and started building but it it never dawned on me to stop right and so that's what I wanted to impart with all my students like wherever you go you know you'll hit some bumps but yeah. get up well, and thank work goodness. through it thank goodness you didn't oh stop. oh I've had a good time <laughs> yeah I was lucky 36 years yeah. of teaching went by so fast yeah. and so I'm still teaching at Sierra College mm -hmm. now for 31 years I guess they're part-time really I've always taught there oh. almost all the time when I was teaching here in town also yeah. in ceramics and sculpture and uh, a lot of good kids. Right now, this semester, I have three students in my classes that I had as middle school students. Really? And it's sort of great to see them grown up. Right. And they came back and um, making great work. And it's great. One, it's actually a high school student that's a junior in high school now. Two are in college. And yeah. And they come back. It's kind of great. I, you know, I feel lucky. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Thanks. It's, so tell us what types, what forms of art do you... What I do. Um, sculptures, ceramic sculptures. Okay. Uh, I like that a lot, the tactile yeah. kinesthetic, moving it around. I had some great teachers in college and some that were tough. And um, the ones that were tougher, even though at the time I wasn't thinking, oh man, you know, this is a tough semester. This one, this teacher is requiring so much. Yeah. That's what I still use today. You know, all that information that they were, you know, demanding right. made sense. I, I'm not sure I got it then. Because sure. I'd have a full load and trying to work full time, and but um, Ruth Repon was a great teacher, and so taught me about glazes, clays, uh -huh. and uh, was incredibly uh, tough. And um, so I try to share some of that with my Sierra students now, mm -hmm. and it's that um, you know this is important. Learn it, know it, understand it, so that when you make your own works, yeah. you know how to make it happen. It's not an accident. You can repeat it, uh -huh. and so. Yes, yeah, sculptures, ceramics, and, and we talked a, a bit ago about stories. Yes. And, and a lot of these are stories yeah. based on here. This piece is a cactus that's based on um, the cactus that are growing outside that my grandfather, when he bought this house years yeah. ago, he, was, he worked at Gladding McBean, the uh -huh. terracotta factory. Yeah. I, I never knew him. He passed away before I was born. Yeah. But um, this was his place. Then he bought it from proceeds from his job and planted those cactus. And so around here, I have different cactus that I have taken a casting of, yeah. and then I'll include it in works. And so, you know, even though this, the meaning changes sometimes, the heart is still there right. of the story. Like, it's still connected. The, the crucifix over there oh, wow. that's up on the wall, yeah. that's from casting of um, the cactus out there. Yeah. But, you know, just that connectedness. Yeah. Trying mm -hmm. to keep that going. But the kind of sculptures, I have potter. I'm a potter. I uh, make vases, sculptures, mm -hmm. um, public artworks, um, have a number of them in Lincoln, mm -hmm. yeah, murals, ceramic murals, Sacramento, Roseville, um, UCD Med Center, different places where they've asked. Wow. So I, I, you know, I just like working and you know, feel lucky to be able to have them out in the world. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I feel lucky. That's so cool. So what, what would you say is like your, your furthest... Um, uh, Distance-wise, from from here, here, that's that's oh, a work. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, um, gosh, it's been probably thirty years ago. My sister and her husband were in Germany. He uh. was in the military. He was in the Air Force, and um, I have a niece and a, a nephew that were with them. And so I'm talking to my family, talking to them on the phone, and. I think it's my niece's art teacher in Germany uh -huh. had one of my works. Oh, and really? I, I didn't know 
how it got. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> yeah. But she knew who I was, and uh, she talked. I guess my niece had talked to her teacher, and um, yeah, he, he, you know, where are you from? Well, my mom's from Lincoln, California, and talking, and then somehow one of my works traveled over there. Wow. And, and one of the things that surprises me is, um, uh, you know, I'm lucky when people buy my works, mm. but then they take a life of their own. Like I don't know where it's going to end up, right. which is sort of great. And I hadn't really thought of that <laughs> when I started making works. Yeah. Um, so probably Germany that I know of, but. Wow. They they travel. Yeah. So I, I you know I feel you know that's you know, I'm surprised but glad. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know where else. The the murals are all um Sacramento, um Placer County, Roseville, all around there. But yeah. That's the small cool. works I'm not sure where they go. I've had um I was in a gallery where I had some pieces made and a person kept coming in and wanting to take photographs mm -hmm. of my piece and it happened to be Chili's that I embedded in a ceramic plate to make a form. I made a cross again. Yeah. And then painted it. And um, this person kept coming in all week. I guess I wasn't there. Sure. The gallery owner calls me and said, hey, a guy's coming in all the time. And he wants to know if he can take a photograph of your work. And there, some people are, are, are reluctant because someone will copy your piece. Right. And I thought, yeah, go ahead. It's yeah. okay. You know, I, why yeah. not? And so um, the guy came back in. He was told it's okay. He bought the work. He's from Philadelphia. He's a pastor. Oh wow! And I didn't. I never met him, but he somehow it, you know, touched him, and yeah. um, so it, that's out there. And, yeah. Um, when when people come into galleries, sometimes I'll know who buys them, and sometimes not. Right. Um, I've had two pieces in where I've made lidded pieces, uh -huh. and. You know, there I I make lidded pieces, not not really to be containers to hold anything. Right. But um, years later, I, I'll get a call, and um, I had made one in uh, Channel Six PBS in Sacramento. Uh -huh. Had had done an art auction, and they wanted to demonstrate have me film making it and do a whole kind of a, a video of that. Yeah. And so I had them come down, and I made a couple to show them the process. And someone bought it on air, and then. Um, like a year later, I'm at an art gallery reception, uh -huh. and there's a couple in the corner, and they're talking about me, and I can feel it, <laughs> and they're looking and looking <laughs> away and trying not to be obvious, yeah. and I don't know what's going on. Sure. And so finally, it's like, <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what that's about. Yeah. And so they finally came over, and um, they're the people that bought it, and they paid way too much for it. It was auctioned on air, and, and they were very nice, and the husband and wife had an argument going because it looked like on television editing uh. that I made it all and fired it and finished it and painted it in one day and then it was auctioned off that night yeah and it's not possible of course sure but the husband convinced the wife it's on TV I saw it <laughs> they made a bet <laughs> and she was like that's no of course not yeah and so they came to me and wanted you know me to answer their bet it to solve it and I, I I'm married and I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, magic of TV, you guys are good. We have a bet going. And it was, <laughs> they were like having fun, but they were like, no, we have a bet. We've been kind of looking to find you. They found me. Wow. And so um, they were fun and I would never tell them. But yeah. And then um, a couple of years later, I got a, 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 I guess in the mail, a message from her. Yeah. Um, he passed away. Oh. And it was a lidded piece that had a chili on top. Yeah. And um, he was cremated and was going to be interred in the vase. Yeah. And I, I, w I know I was humbled. And that's the second time that's happened. Wow. And I never really made urns like yeah. that. But if some, you know, there, I love them. And, you know, I make them with care. Yeah. But twice people have done that. Wow. And so, you know, it's touching to me. You know, I, I you know, I, I'm just humbled. Right. So, yeah. Wow. That happens out there. Where do things go? I don't even know. Yeah. You know I'm just glad. I've, at the same time, you know, I, I'm the autumn art tour is coming up. And I've been working. And this summer I'm at the auction, mm -hmm. Roseville Auction, Denios. Yeah. And people have yard sale things out. And um, I'm walking around and there's like yard sale stuff, like older things on the ground. And sure. I see one of my vases. What? <laughs> I know. Wow. And so... Um, <laughs> I asked the guy, hey, how much for this? <laughs> and he's like, 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so I say, because he's thinking I'm going to bargain with him, yeah. is that all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, why? It's worth a lot more. <laughs> and I teased him and talked to him. And, yeah. you know, I don't know where it, 
where it came from. It was one I made probably 15 years ago. Sure, wow. And, and it traveled. I don't know where it went to now, but it was kind of interesting to see there. <laughs> it's like connecting the dots. That's yeah, kind of cool. I kind of wanted to know where that, you know, where it was. Right. I, I, I recognized it right away. Of course, I know my pieces, Yeah. but I know it's been 15 years ago, so it's changed hands a few times. Right. So. So I, now I've arrived. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay. You know, things go where they go. Right. Yeah. That, right. That's okay. The, the, the important part for me is a process. Yes. And learning and, and then moving yeah. it into someone else's hands. And knowing really, you know, that it's touched many different people in yeah. different ways along the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things that we like to do on Lincoln Live is we like to have a very interactive show. And I okay. am sorry, you guys, I am hugging Ray because <laughs> we were just having a great conversation and he's just such an interesting uh -huh. person. And um, But I want to give you guys the chance to also ask questions, uh, make comments, anything that you have, any thoughts? Um, lots of love. Lots oh. of love. Oh. Um, Angela Balderas oh, has right. commented and she said how she was your student. She was. She's a sweetheart. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So she's super excited. Sue Martin says hi. And oh, she gosh. She loves your work. And, oh, thank you. Um, everyone's loving it. But um, they do want to know more about um, tomorrow's event. Yes. The event okay. that's coming up next weekend. Okay, great. Yeah. So, and, and we're definitely getting there. I just, you know, I... Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I'm just really enjoying hearing from Ray. Oh, so thanks. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and, and let him talk more about that. Oh, okay. and also um, the raffle prize, if you could oh, right. yep. touch on that too. So I will. Um, take it away. Okay, first um, <laughs> tomorrow at the Art League of Lincoln Center, 586th Street here in Lincoln, um, is a kickoff for the Autumn Art Tour that's coming up. It's the 25th annual Silver Anniversary Autumn Art Tour where artists in Placer County open their studio doors. Mm -hmm. And so I'm giving a talk from 6 to 8 there, um, a retrospective about the arts in Placer County, how the arts have developed and changed, and then a little bit of my own story and, yeah. and um, talking about the different arts that are there and in town and Feats of Clay, uh, uh, a project I started a lot, a lot of years ago that <gasps> ran. Yeah, that you was started? mine. I didn't I know did, that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I ran for 24 years, yeah. was, became a national and then an international. Wow. And um, a great run, terrific stuff. Gladding McBean was wonderful, and community members were generous with their time and energy. And and uh, well, I'll talk about that tomorrow, six to eight. And other people are, are coming to talk. Um, a nice person from Placer County Archives is going to talk. John Robeck from the Art League of Lincoln will talk. And um, that's tomorrow. And, and tonight, actually, at the Blue Line Gallery in Roseville. There's an exhibit opening of many of the artists that are on the Placer County uh, Arts of Placer County Art Tour that opens this evening, mm -hmm. and so there'll be a lot of art there represented. I, I'm teaching at Sierra College tonight, so I won't be there, but a lot of a lot of artists will be there, and a lot of terrific art. Um, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is the Autumn Art Tour in my studio here, right here where I am, where there are a lot of work, and it's a working studio. So pardon the ceramic wheels and clay yeah. all over and bags. You want to show and everybody kind of what we got going on here? Yeah, take a look. Yeah. I, I, I've been lucky and after teaching for a lot of years realized now I need my own classroom so I can work in <laughs> every day. So here I am. This is my studio. Um, slab rollers, potter's wheels, kilns, glazes, paints, silk screening. I have a son, Gabriel Gonzalez, who's been here painting the image you're seeing right now <laughs> on any denim he can find. I bought everything that's denim at Field Haven oh. two weeks ago, and he's been silk screening and painting on it. And um, have different friends coming in here and working yeah. with me, and just kind of having a little center of my own for for just pure art coming to work. And and so next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from ten to five, um, this studio will be open at 208 D Street on the side gate. Please come in, not on the renters. They're wonderful people, but they, they want their privacy. Sure. <laughs> and so come on in uh, and um, see what's here. And, you know, everyone's welcome. Do you, do you mind? Um, I, I'd love to. What are those? Tell those me are those. Um, screens. Want me to pick it up? Yeah, please. It, yeah. So With, that's um, some of the stuff you would use for the T-shirts. Oh, right. sure. Well, if we made them ourselves, it'd be a little more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What we're doing. Um, so. This is a silk screen. Uh, and it's uh, an image my son Gabe Gonzalez had uh, developed and worked. He's got a stack of them here. Yeah. And he's printed them for his own his own edifice as well as selling. He's yeah. got a band. It, he goes by Jackie Dreamspell. Oh, cute. Um, websites, 
uh, Instagrams. Uh, he's a musician where he plays music. He's, yeah. he's all over the place and has in just interesting stuff. Terrific it, artist. Is he local as well? He is, yeah. Uh, he's from Lincoln here. And, and yeah, I have three sons. They yeah. all play music. Wow. Um, he, Gabriel is my middle son. My oldest son is, plays guitar and has a band um, play they all play the piano I, I'm lucky oh. to have a grand piano that I bought on Lincoln Yard sale <laughs> no kidding <laughs> that's how local it is <laughs> and so yeah. keep it local and, and my youngest son also a musician he's yeah. a facilities manager at the B Street Theater in Sacramento really and so they're all um, swallowed up in the arts and all, wow. all great guys and, you know I'm just lucky that um, they stay close and, and yeah. you know and, and good for them to find their way in the arts I think I'm sensing some future Lincoln Live shows, too. So. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I could have had some playing music here for you. If you ever need an <laughs> intro or something, they're, they're all over it. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, really. So that would be cool. But, yeah, yeah he's got a stack of silk screens and painting. Yeah. I'm developing images and um, has some cool things. I ha This shirt is actually not one of his. Lots of times I'll have one that's his. Gotcha. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just had to know because that just really jumped out at me. Thanks. Um, yeah, that, I like that. That's awesome. Yeah, he, he has some cool, cool images that he's yeah. developed in. Uh, it's very cool to see um, someone else, another generation coming in, taking over, you know, and right. moving and just forward. continuing that legacy. It is, yeah. It, yeah, I'm lucky. I feel lucky about that. Totally. But, yeah. Yeah. So I also want to mention to you guys, and we're going to get to the raffle prize here in just a moment. Uh -huh. Um, in order to be entered into the raffle, as a few of you know, because there's some diehard folks that watch every single week, we we recently made some changes to the raffle because we want to make it fair for everybody. We understand a lot of you guys are working during the day, and maybe you guys don't get to see the show live, but you can see it later. So if you do share this video by tomorrow, Friday at 12 o'clock noon, you will be entered into a raffle. Um, and can you tell us about the raffle? I will. Um, could you get that little chili bowl back there, please? It's on the table. I think <laughs> I left it. It's, uh, I, I've worked on a series of chilies for a long time. And yeah, thank you. Growing up here, you want a story about the chilies or, or not so much? <laughs> yeah. And, and so I grew up right here, like yeah. in this spot. And, and I had older brothers and sisters. And I remember being a little guy in the house when my mom was cooking chilies. The smell was so strong, it would make your eyes water. Like, right. it would just make you cry. <laughs> and so, I love the smell. Yeah. And so, one of the stories that I remember growing up that this came from was um, when my brother that's just older, Victor, yeah. would was in middle school. And right where the care center is a block away sure. was Mary Berman School. That was the school. Oh. And I would be a goofy kid in the backyard. He would bring his middle school friends over. Uh -huh. And they would... Um, they were all trying to be tough guys. We all were, I guess. <laughs> and so he'd have his friends sit at the table, and I would watch them. I'm a little guy. They were all my heroes. They were big, and they were cool, and, you know, yeah. they knew how to comb their hair just right, and they had a swagger. <laughs> and um, they w his friends would sit at the table with a jar of my mom's chilies, and I'm watching, not knowing what they're going to do. <laughs> and they would each take one and eat it. Yeah. And they were so hot, but they wouldn't quit. And it's like whoever <laughs> quit first, you know, wasn't wasn't all that and yeah. so they would keep going and going and then my heroes were melting like their voices were changing they're <laughs> sweating they're getting smaller and I'm watching them wondering why they keep kept going but it's bravado <laughs> and so they kept going and and uh, and so as I as I got better at making things out of clay and, yeah. and um, I'm throwing vases and I can throw on the potter's wheel pretty well and but it needed a story and yeah. so I made the chilies and so these are those chilies <laughs> that kind of represent that I had a piece in um, Access Art Gallery in Sacramento a year ago where I had um, an old table that was in my mom's old house yeah with a jar just a mason jar filled with these chilies yeah. with a couple of old chairs from the house back in the days Wow! and that was the narrative and it and then I had it printed out what happened and why that was there it was middle school machismo sorry <laughs> and it's that yeah here here's what these guys did and wow. yeah that's part of my their my history and their story really not mine yeah but it was fun to watch so that's how these came about that's so, so cool kind of fun so that yeah. this is your raffle prize this, this is, is the raffle prize this oh is the uh, very cool piece I have these uh, around Channel 6 has auctioned a number of them off. Oh, my goodness. They've been in different galleries. I have bigger versions here. Um, here and here and here. 
but this is one of my favorites. It's a beautiful, it's called a celadon glaze, a traditional Japanese glaze. Okay. With um, bright red and green caps on the chilies. And yeah. It's the prize, so. I love you, that. You should give that away. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is so cool. So there's often times where I'm a little jealous because, you know, obviously I can't enter into the raffle. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll share the video, but, I, you know, it just wouldn't be fair. But um, anyway, so yes, whoever wins, um, this is really cool, guys. And so you Thanks. get to own um, a little piece of, you know, race story, and that's just cool. And Thanks. it's heavy, too. Yeah. I gotta tell you, like, this is probably, what would you say, like eight pounds maybe? Yeah, right around there. Yeah. Yeah, they're not light. <laughs> no, I was yeah. like, I've had lots of babies, so. <laughs> yeah, that sense like of how many <laughs> yeah. pounds they weigh, yeah. <laughs> Newborn baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have big babies. <laughs> so. Us too. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah. so you mentioned you were one of nine children. Yeah. yeah. Where did you fall? I'm seven. I'm seven. Seventh of nine. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what so. was the, the span, like, from oldest to youngest? Um. My oldest brother, Paul, was, um, he's 16 years older. Okay. Yeah. And my youngest two sisters are twins. They're oh. four years younger. So wow. So pretty good span. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. And, and that was probably like a big surprise. Like, oh, goodness, uh, twins. Yeah. But. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I remember living next door, our neighbors that lived next door forever. And I, and I love my younger sisters, uh, like all of them. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it was a surprise to me too. Hey, I'm the y I was the youngest. You Suddenly, I'm not. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, mostly boys, girls uh, combination. Um, five girls. So I, oh. I had five sisters, and it's wow. like, wow. Yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a gun. And they were all in charge of me. They thought, no, not really, not really, <laughs> Gloria. Just kidding. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and is anybody still local here in Lincoln? Yeah. Uh, um, all but um, three. Really. Yeah, I have, a, and a brother and sister that are in Oklahoma. Not. Not intentionally about an hour apart, but they ended up an hour apart. Wow. And then a sister in Rockland and the rest are in Lincoln, different parts of town. So. That's so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I have well, just, it has been such a pleasure um, getting to know more about you. And like I said, I was very impressed by you. My children were very impressed by you coming through 12 Bridges Middle oh, and just oh. having the honor of being taught by you. Oh. Um, and so, you know, I, I really appreciate your time. And, and um, I want to just reiterate to you guys, um, uh, definitely come by tomorrow from 6 to 8 at the Art League of Lincoln. And yep. how would people get uh, tickets or is it? It's free. Just show up so and, and there will be refreshments and, and talks and just come join us. No cost. And the Autumn Art Tour that starts next weekend, Friday, Saturday and, Saturday and Sunday, that's free too. Just show up. Cool. I have maps if anyone needs to take a photo to see other places. The Art League of Lincoln will be open and showing a number of artists. Neil DeVore another Lincoln artist, a woodworker, um, has his studio open in Lincoln and throughout Placer County. I think there are 39 locations Wow! with over 50 artists yeah. and five galleries will be open. So it's a big weekend next weekend. Yeah. So it'd be great to get out and see some art. Yes. So yeah. 25th year, silver anniversary. Helen Phillips from Loomis, a batik artist, started this, the Autumn Art Tour. She's wonderful and, and a, just a, a fantastic artist and, and hardworking person. And um, she's back helping, so I'm just glad she is. Yeah. She's great. So. Well, we are just so blessed to just even have uh, you and have these other artists and the opportunity to really preserve the arts in our community. Uh, and again, oh, thanks. thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for watching, and um, be sure to share this video anyway, anywhere up until tomorrow at noon uh, to have your chance to be entered into the raffle for that awesome prize. And you guys have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week.